Everything wrong with steering wheels in Forza Horizon 4. That is the topic today. I'm Blue028 and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to touch upon quite a few issues like uh, audio bugs, uh, force feedback settings, force feedback in general, uh, wheel implementation, gearbox implementation, wheel setup and all, all kinds of things. So let's get right into it. Gear grinding audio bug. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to do a quick run uh, using the hood view and just run up to fifth gear and then back down to first. And then we're going to do the same thing but in the cockpit view. And I'm just going to be changing gears as fast as I possibly can. So let's get to it. Alright, so that's one run down. So now all we're going to do is change to the cockpit view. Now as soon as I switch this, this to the internal camera, you're going to start hearing the audio bug. It was doing it before, now it's not doing it. Oop, there it goes. Okay, the audio bug isn't normally just literally before I started recording this it was making that grinding noise when I switched to the internal camera as you can see I can put the car in neutral and just press and release the clutch and grind the gears so let's do what we did before and just accelerate up to fifth gear So as you can see, we literally just grinded every gear by doing the exact same, just by having a different view. So that bug is uh, gear grinding noise when you're inside cockpit view. So the next bug we're going to cover is not so much of a bug, but just a really poor implementation of the gearbox model. So we're driving this car with our H pattern and clutch. And we're just going to make our way to a career a career mission so at the moment I'm really forcing myself to use the hood view just because of that audio bug where every gear wants to grind in the internal car cameras so here we are I'm playing the career mode I've just driven to my next event a stunt driver I'm going to join this, enter this, solo, and let's select a chapter. Uh, now, which one? Okay, I think this was the one. So, we've just driven f in a H pattern car to the event, and we've just selected the event, and now it's going to put us straight Hi. into the Bugatti Chiron. Joel vouches for you, so I suppose you'll have to do. Get in your car, get over to Broadway. We're setting up there. Okay, so now I'm in a paddle shift car. Off to Broadway and step on it, yeah? We don't want to lose the light. So I can use the paddle shift and grind the gears, or what I should be able to do is go and change the difficulty settings, but they're locked while I'm in event. So now I am stuck with having to press the clutch in a car that doesn't have a clutch just because I can't change the difficulty because I'm in, event, in an event. So I can either press the clutch and use the paddles or you know I can just keep using H pattern shifting. Both of which are not ideal for this car at all. Uh, next on the list is force feedback, and there's two things that two that I really don't like about the force feedback. Um, the first one is uh, even with a car like this S13 with drift suspension fully set up for drifting and mechanical trail force feedback, the force feedback still can't really keep up with what the car's doing. That was a bad example. Let me try that one again. So using sim steering, 900 degrees with full feedback, fully set up for the mechanical trail. 
an experienced drifter. The force feedback still just cannot keep up in high angle transitions. And the other thing I don't like is the newly implemented road fuel forces, which are really quite heavy and noisy. Um, they also apply very heavily off-road, which just means you get these massive, massive vibrations through the wheel and it feels absolutely terrible. And the worst part about it is there's no, with the new uh, force feedback that's been implemented in this game, there is no new setting to be able to tune those forces. So we're stuck, if you want a, a heavy wheel with strong aligning forces, you are completely stuck with how violent and shaky the wheel is when you drive off-road and the career mode in this game has a lot of times where you have to drive off-road and the force feedback just feels absolutely terrible because you cannot change how that feels at all unless you just completely turn down the force feedback but then you're less stuck with doing two separate force feedbacks for two s separate force uh, surface types which sh should not be the case you should just be able to set your force feedback up once and it will, should just work with every surface whereas this, these road fill impact forces are just horrible and I don't like them they're too powerful Okay, now we're on to controller mapping. So I've removed Emmy wheel from my system and I'm going to attempt to set up my wheel as the game, uh, as you would usually set the wheel up um, if you were playing the game for the first time. So I have two separate USB devices, one for my wheel, which has the shifter connected to it, and one for my pedals, which has the handbrake connected to it. So we'll jump straight into the options. And I don't even know if this is going to work. Um, Presuming it's not going to, but we're going to find out. So we want custom wheel profile too. Now let's have a look. Okay, accelerate, brake, steering, e-brake, switch camera, radio next. Who cares? Activate can be that one. We just basically have to set all these controls that are required to be able to set a custom mapping. Activate Anna, quick chat activate, let's you know, just do that. Look left, no we don't need look left. Look right, look back, telemetry, map, shift up. Okay, we need a shift up. And we need a shift down. Where is shift down? It would be handy if those were, you know, put right next to each other since they are kind of paired together. Horn. Oh, hey, my horn button works. Clutch. And why a clutch isn't up with all the other input axes, I have no idea. Okay, so we'll map all the gears as well. Fifth gear and sixth gear. Now, my wheel doesn't support the seventh gear on my club sport shifter, but. Okay, so we have all our important axes uh, buttons set up. So what we're going to do is hit save. Okay. Now well, we back out. And now we go back and have a look. And see if it's actually saved. And as you can see, everything is undefined. The complete mapping we just did is completely broken. Because the game doesn't know how to save the file properly. So, what we have to do is we have to do a manual workaround because the game is broken so what we need to do is go to app data we have to navigate through all these folders until we can get to uh, I've got to remember which way to go on packages until we can find uh, the game saved file for the input mapping so uh, we want Microsoft Sunrise Base Game wherever it is, I'm going blind ah there it is Sunrise Base Game System App Data, WGS now we get through all this coded nonsense 
and we need to find this file. So this is our written file of the mapping we just set. So either way, the trying to set the wheel up in game the way you're supposed to do it is just completely broken unless you're using your, your wheel over one USB device. Good luck trying to get it set up on your own unless you're um, handy with doing all this sort of stuff, which I'm not very handy, I have to admit. Um, I do get a lot of help from the guys on the Discord server that uh, built Emuwheel and the guys that offer support over there. Um, and I can't even see my force feedback device, VID, PID, which is normally right up near the top. So, yeah, there you have it. Uh, custom mapping multiple USB devices is totally whacked. It's a bit broken and it, it just doesn't work. And our final topic is going to be controller settings. So you just saw that the uh, trying to set up a custom profile that has multiple USB devices is pretty broken. And the other thing that I'm going to pick on is the advanced settings and force feedback controls. Um, mainly because there's missing settings and settings that are um, falsely labelled and settings that just don't make logical sense to have. Um, and we're going to start uh, you know, let's start with force feedback scale. Most games, if they have a force feedback scale, it is a scale of the total force feedback that gets sent to the wheel. In Forza, this isn't the case, and it's actually the scale of the aligning forces that's sent to the wheel. So it doesn't matter what uh, settings you have that aren't don't come from the aligning forces, those will not be scaled with the force feedback scale, which is very confusing. Um, and I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it's just something that you know they should have a master force feedback scale in the game, because not everyone has access to a a force feedback scale on their wheel like I do with my Fnatic wheels. Moving on, uh, we have force feedback understeer. Work does as it should, but like I pointed out before, I still feel like the uh, caster trail or mechanical trail portion of the force feedback is still too weak. Um, even when you max this out and max out your caster angle in the game, you still get significant force feedback drop off when you push past peak slip angle, which uh, is something that you should be able to avoid. You can do it in Forza Motorsport 7, but in Forza Horizon 4, you just can't um, eliminate that force feedback drop off enough, in my opinion. And then the big one that has a red flag for me is force feedback minimum force because this is very inaccurately labelled um, because people see this and think it's just you know a traditional minimum force setting and I'm going to use paint uh, just to show you guys a rough illustration of what the difference actually is so I'll make this nice and big for you guys so traditionally say if we have a graph so this is 0, and this is 10,000, which is the maximum force feedback value that can be sent. So that's a linear force um, from 0 to maximum, and a minimum force traditionally, what it will do is rather than starting at zero, it will start at the percentage of the force feedback that you set the minimum force to. So you get this flat line effect where, so if you have a force feedback wheel that has a very dead center and the forces don't come through, if you add a minimum force setting uh, and bump up the minimum force that gets sent to the wheel, so it, it instead of starting from zero, anything below this value will just become this value. That's the idea behind a minimum force. And so you can see why it is inaccurately labelled in the game because it doesn't do that at all. This just scales the torque curve that's generated by the self-aligning torque of the tyre. So to me, they really need to change the name of that setting because it it's misleading. Okay, so steering sensitivity is very, very stupid. Um, I don't know why they put it in there because it's such a complex feature. I'm going to give their write-up of what it actually does. So, 
steering sensitivity. Look at look at the long write up for this. This is just an an explanation of what this setting actually does by the developer. That is so ridiculous. It's such a complex setting that achieves something that should be done much, much simpler. So, let's start at the top. This adjusts the ratio of your steering's degrees of rotation to the car's front wheel's actual degrees of steering rotation. And so, basically what they're saying is degrees of rotation, uh, steering sensitivity is like a degrees of rotation setting. Um, because when you change degrees of rotation, you essentially change the steering ratio between your wheel and the in-game car. So, we'll keep going on. Along with force feedback scale, this is one of the most commonly understood misunderstood advanced settings. Hmm, I wonder why. A point of confusion among wheel users is the fact that the hands animation clock for you don't turn the steering wheel more than 90 degrees in either direction. This does not represent the actual in-game steering wheel rotation, just the graphical tire steering lock angle is not 100% representational of the actual physic physics steering lock. This is one of those reasons a dashboard camera has been added to the games. So this is something that we've known for a long time, ever since we first had a cockpit view and 900 degree wheel wheels, which was back in Forza Motorsport 3, uh, which was a very long time ago, and I have been playing on Forza Feedback wheels with Forza for longer than that. And this is the graph they have to visualise what the setting actually does. So this is, the orange line is the default linear setting. Uh, the orange, uh, sorry, the grey line is the maximum, so as you can see, the steering wheel is uh, essentially halved. The, the wheel rotation is essentially halved, and then the minimum setting basically lowers the degrees of rotation to the point where you won't get your wheels to max lock, or it will shoot up like an elbow at the end of the input, like I demonstrated in an early video as well. So, their tip, we suggest you adjust the wheel rotation in the software or the steering sensitivity in game, not both. What I recommend is completely disregard that, just leave that on 50 and if you want to adjust your degrees of rotation, do it in your driver or on the wheel because this setting is so ridiculous, you do not, it doesn't give you an accurate measurement of um, the actual degrees of rotation, you have to do that math in your head as you change the setting, which is stupid. The, this should just be degrees of rotation. Uh, so anyway, back to the game. So that pretty much covers my disappointments with the setting. I'll touch on one other thing, is the vibration scale. Now this is literally a controller vibration setting that's sent through the force feedback motor, so any, th any sort of thing, um, moment that causes vibration when you use a controller, for instance, wheel lock up, wheel spin, sliding sideways, driving off road, um, uh, driving up close to the rev limiter, anything that triggers that vibration on a controller triggers the vibrations in the steering wheel and it's completely unrealistic um, and I mean it would work fine if we were back on the 360 where we had force feedback wheels that had vibration motors built into the wheel rims but that's not the case anymore. The the force feedback or sorry the protocol that was developed for the 360 to use that technology is not used on the PC so um, this setting makes absolutely no sense to be implemented the way it is. And I could go on for a long time talking about force feedback and settings, but we're not going to do that. Um, I've already dragged on long enough, and hopefully I've pointed out to you guys some of the key flaws in using a steering wheel with Forza Horizon 4. Hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!